heavy impact will not ruin the device? It will do absolutely nothing. We have looked at this in detail in a group of patients under the age of 55, and we've published on that in the past, and we're about to publish it on it again. And the 12 and a half year survivorship in that under 55 group with osteoarthritis at 12 and a half years is 98%. In the men who were the biggest group, uh, subgroup in, of those patients, 98% of them play sport, 62% of them are playing impact sport. So in the face of a phenomenal activity level, we've got a 12 and a half year, 98% success. I think that's pretty impressive. That is very impressive. So for patients that are in need of hip surgery and watching this, what advice would you tell them and, and why should they get hip resurfacing as opposed to a total hip replacement? Many doctors will have a different opinion on that. We've heard at this conference some surgeons who won't do a hip resurfacing at all because they've heard from the United Kingdom about this alert and they've heard from Oxford these reports on pseudotumors with bad outcomes having revised the implant. But if that device is well designed and well inserted, it'll work and it'll work in the long term. And you know, the metal metal bearing that that's made of, that goes back a long way. And I've had a lady in my office for review and he, she had her operation done at the age of 20 by one of my predecessors, the late Rodney Sneath. And he did a metal, metal, total hip when she was 20. And I reviewed her when she was 60, 40 years on. And she is absolutely perfect. The x-ray is as good as the day it was put in. So we know that that bearing, if it's correctly made, it has the correct metallurgy, the ASCAR structure of the Birmingham hip resurfacing, which is the same as the old historic metal metal total hips. And most importantly, it's correctly inserted by the surgeon. That can last a patient's lifetime. And in this extremely active lady, it has lasted beautifully 40 years. So I have no concern about well-manufactured and well-inserted metal metal devices. But patients need to understand that it does require good quality implantation because of, sadly we've seen horrible failures at one year where the cup was put in badly, the load was taken on the edge, phenomenal high wear occurred and an adverse reaction requiring an early revision. We all know that we can drive our car around with lubrication oil in the engine. If you take the lubrication oil out of that engine, it's not going to last too long. And causing a metal metal bearing to articulate on the edge of the cup is exactly like draining the lubricating oil out of the engine. It doesn't work well. No. So um, what you're telling me then is that based on the design of devices that have been out there for over 40 years, the BHR device is very similar, so there's in fact a lot more data than people really realize as far as how long the device will last in a patient. If it's designed correctly, like the BHR is, and um, if it's installed correctly. Correct. So the BHR, I did the first one, so it's maximum 12 years and eight months down the line but it's been inserted in multiple countries now, including for the last four years in the US, in 125,000 patients. So there's a big experience and a big published experience in the hands of many surgeons. And the Australian National Register shows that the Birmingham hip resurfacing is the best resurfacing implant. And many other reports indicate that that's the case also. For example, in Oswestry, when we started doing the Birmingham hip resurfacing, we hired the outcome center in Oswestry to follow up the first 5,000 Birmingham hip resurfacings that were done across the world. And now, there are over 500 patients 
who have gone beyond the 10-year follow-up stage. These have been done by 18 surgeons in 16 different countries. So over 500 patients, over 10 years of follow-up, all the same BHR, all the surgeons were trained by myself or Ronan Tracy. 95.4% survivorship at 10 plus years. So that works in the hands of multiple different surgeons in 16 different countries. So this scare that's out in the press about metal ions and pseudotumors, if a patient is smart to do their research, find a very skilled and experienced surgeon and get a component that has good uh, background and data behind it, then a hip resurfacing is a great choice then. Absolutely. You have to have the right patient, the right implant, and the right surgeon. And you got all of those, you're gonna win. So should a patient be afraid of pseudotumors or metal ions? I don't think so. Okay. We now know a lot more about it. Of course, there are many patients who are going to be upset by this. And there are going to be many patients in particular with the ASR device in them who are going to be frightened to death. But mechanisms have got to be put in place to follow up those patients very, very carefully. And sadly, in, in many of them, redo their surgery and I'm sure Tony Nargol has explained to you the sort of systems that he's currently setting up to follow up his patients with the ASR device. We happily do not need that with the BHR. The BHR was not rushed to market. The BHR was six and a half years in gestation. We took our time to perfect the design then we did it for a period of time in only the hands of three surgeons to make sure that there was nothing wrong. And from the day it was inserted until today, no changes have been made to the design of that implant. That's because no changes have had to be made to the design of that implant. And then in your series, I mean, for over 12 years, 3,500 BHRs installed, only one pseudotumor. Well, I, I maintain it's 10, <laughs> but I was told by experts today that because nine of those are purely fluid collections, it's only one real pseudotumor. So that's fine. I think the important thing is not to get hooked up on names and particularly scary names like pseudotumor, but to understand, well, what happens if a patient is unfortunate enough and it does go wrong? and they have to have a redo. And it's good to know that all of those 10 patients have had a great outcome with a total hip replacement. Well, is there anything you'd like to say to sum this up as far as for any future patients that are looking into hip surgery? In relation to pseudotumors, there's going to be a lot of people scared right now. I think it's important to understand that there's a lot of patients who've been there before. And if they think today that they're scared, just think back to my very first patient in February 1991. And I could not tell her whether her device would last a week or a month or a year or 10 years. Now I can tell a patient, if I do a Birmingham hip resurfacing on you, irrespective of age or diagnosis, you will, if you're a man, have a 98% chance of implant survival at 10 years. And if you're a woman, at 10 years, you'll have a 96% chance. The average age of my patient group is 53. And we wanted to get them to 63, so that we, they'd be a better age for a total hip replacement. Of course, having done 12 and a half years plus now, nobody wants to volunteer to have their resurfacing taken out because they're terrific. And so on my 10-year patients, their next follow-up is at 15 years. On my 15-year follow-up metal metal patients, and their next follow-up is at 20 years. And I'll start to see the 20-year metal metal follow-ups next year. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I will be too when mine hits 15 years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today, Derek. It's a pleasure, Vicki. We really appreciate it. Thank you.